Now? Yes. Okay. <laughs> thank you, Havin. Thank you, everyone here. Uh, I'm very excited uh, for this conference. This is the fourth one we are doing, and I see every time more people, uh, and I hope this will go somewhere really big. Um, as you might know, in February, a devastating earthquake happened in Turkey and Syria that left tens of thousands of people dead and millions homeless. It was a particularly strong earthquake, 7.8 to be precise, that lasted one and a half minutes. As devastating as the earthquake itself was, for most people in the region, its aftermath has affected them more. And actually, what happened in the aftermath of the earthquake is unfortunately a telling example of how society is being killed again and again in the world, how society side occurs, in other words, and how people nevertheless fight against it. Therefore, and in order to elaborate on what society side is, in this talk, I will briefly dwell in this aftermath of the earthquake. And after I discuss it, I will come back to society size, to this most urgent problem in the world, and try to tackle it historically and conceptually. So the earthquake. In the earthquake, more than 50,000 people died in Turkey only, and hundreds of thousands were injured. But what was specifically tragic about this earthquake that basically left three cities in Turkey in complete rubbles, and what made it unbearable to watch, to listen to, was the fact that many people who died, who eventually died, actually survived the earthquake. They were able to, how do we know that? that? Because they were able to text their relatives right after the earthquake from under the rubble, rubbles and called for their help. Many died, however, they died waiting rescue, which did not arrive until three days later. Many died of cold, although they had no injuries. Survivors to this day tell the stories of how they heard the voices of their relatives for hours until the voices went silent after tens of hours because the heavy machines needed for the rescue never arrived. I'm not going to discuss in length the multiple ways in which capital and state worked together to produce this devastation through the construction sector, which is the motor of development in Turkey. There's a lot to say about that and about how, how capitalism operates in countries like Turkey through the construction uh, industry. After all, three cities disappeared from the earth because of the fantasies in, in the very, uh, invested in the very corrupt construction sector that promises wealth, happiness, and in return produces that and, uh, and, um, killing, uh, and ends up killing people. Currently and ironically, the Turkish state is responding to the earthquake once again through planning a major reconstruction project and conjuring the fantasies invested in development. However, the houses that were destroyed will be replaced with uh, apartment complexes in the outskirts of the city, which means that the majority of survivors will be actually further dispossessed. After calculating, the price of their destructed homes and subtracting it from the price of the newly built apartments, there will be still some money they have to pay to acquire these apartments, which will leave them in debt. This debt, however, they will not be able to pay precisely because the apartments will be away from city centers where work exists. Coming back to the aftermath of the earthquake. There were three ways in which society side was committed after the earthquake. 
first the aftermath of the earthquake and the fact that people who survived the earthquake were not rescued made clear that society lacking autonomy, lacking basic knowledge and equipment for rescue was completely incapacitated. Living in houses they bought in, mar in the market, they were alienated from them and lacked basic knowledge and skills on how to deal with the destruction. Many expressed their feeling of incapacity, despair, helplessness, calling for the help of the state, which came three days later. Actually, it never came. Second, the fact that machines, equipments, and rescue teams were centralized in the capital city has caused the death of further thousands. It wasn't until the president himself allowed them to be transferred to the earthquake after three days, earthquake sites, that systematic rescue could be started. The state that people called for had incapacitated itself because of its fear from the autonomy of people and had centralized everything. Third, there were people from all over Turkey who wanted to help the survivors. However, the state also feared them and prevented them from helping and even cut the internet at some point to avoid the flow of information. Fourth, and the worst of it all maybe, was that during the earthquake, during the aftermath of the earthquake, Roman citizens and Syrian refugees were blamed for looting empty houses. People from the devastated cities called for the army and the police to prevent this. Soon afterwards, pictures were leaked where the so-called looters, the Syrian refugees, were tortured by the police. Basically, what I'm trying to say is, yes, earthquake is devastating. But it is not nature that kills the capacity of people to regenerate themselves and help themselves, but state policies that target society's autonomy and its capacity to produce politics and morality. In other words, its capacity to rule itself without the interference of the state. This is what we mean by society side. The concept of society size is one of the most important concepts that has been developed by Abdullah Öcalan to refer to the constant war waged by state structures and the expansion of capital against the autonomy of communities and their ability to reproduce themselves. The, concepts of, the concept of society side unravel how social forms are robbed their capacity of producing morality and politics. Instead, law and policing become the means by which social life is regulated and controlled. controlled. Here it is important to understand that Öcalan is pitting the social against stateness, the local against the central, people's economy against capital, and equality against hierarchy. He is referring to a deep historical process that has started with the monopolization of the means of production, reproduction, governance, and self-defense by the few. The, mu the minute the society is in need of state intervention for its survival, such as we have seen also during COVID, it means that society side has already taken deep roots. For Rajalan, while society side has started with the emergence of the state, the, devalu the devaluation of female labor and the submission of women to men, and of course urbanization that accompanied the, this, has a history of at least 5,000 years but it has reached its peak in this last century. Society side is closely related to genocide, ecocide, and femicide. It is through all these ways of killing and destruction that capitalism and state structures work 
and gain dominance. However, society side also encompasses the subtle ways in which society is made dependent on the state and capital for its survival by being robbed the knowledge and networks and the capacity to make its own politics and morals. What we in Turkey call the third page of the newspaper, where mundane murders and everyday crime is report, are reported, is actually a document of how society side works, where people are pitted against each other through gendered class and ethnic line, lines, and how state makes itself indispensable in the fantasies of people as an entity that will end violence and provide safety and security. Now I want to dwell very briefly in the links between genocide, ethnocide, and society side by turning back to the example of the earthquake. The two cities that were affected by the earthquake were predominantly Kurdish, and one was Arab and Alawite. And this was not the first time that these areas were experiencing being under the ruins. In 1908, the first massacre of the Ar Armenians occurred in these areas. And at that time, Zabel Yesean, a feminist writer, reported the massacre in her memorial under the ruins with the following words. No words could ever represent the sum of the pain here. How her words resonate today. Yesean thought that this would be the last time that she would witness such a devastation. Believing in the laws of liberal modernity, she thought the Armenians of the area had died into citizenship because their pain would be felt by other people and this would be a sacrifice that would contribute to the making of an equal society in Turkey. Oh, how wrong she was. Numerous massacres occurred afterwards that accumulated in the Armenian genocide and later numerous other massacres targeted the Kurdish people and the Alevis in the very same region. In other words, the society side in these regions occurred hand in hand with genocide and ethnocide, and it was through the policies of the state that the devastation that we witness today has become a regularity rather than an exception in these lands. Now, still, let me finish with a hopeful tone. As I said, Öcalan defines society side as the incapacitation of society and the replacement of morality and politics through which a society regulates itself autonomously by law and state, which contributes to a fantasy that state is indispensable to our survival. However, he does not see this process of society sides as completed and points to multiple ways in which people come together and fight against society side by organizing themselves, themselves and drawing to the past experiences and future utopias. In the earthquake, in the aftermath of the earthquake, one of the most impressive initiatives was created by the Kurdish women's movement and feminist organizations in Turkey. They have organized autonomously to show their solidarity with women survivors in the earthquake area, despite states constant attempts to bring their initiative to a halt. Women provided pads and tampons, cleaning products and clean pants to other women whose needs were systematically ignored by the patriarchal state. They built a tent where women could come together and in the company of tea discuss their experiences. Women would make sure that the entire society partook in this endeavor by collecting money and by arranging one week trips to the area. They made this initiative sustainable through individual and collective networks to this day. 
than to finish what I started. If we want to end society side, it is going to be through valuation of women's labor and women's capacity to produce morality and politics. It is going to be by taking, taking the lessons of COVID. We need to be able to create autonomous structures and wide networks among them to sustain ourselves in the face of devastation, since in this age of ecocide, devastation is a regularity than exception. I hope this conference will contribute to that. Thank you.